So anyway, you have a quarter cup of chopped parsley to get started, a quarter cup of grated Romano cheese, and a quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese. You could use all Romano, but don't use all Parmesan because it doesn't have enough of a punch, a robust kind of salty kick the way the Romano does. You have one and a half cups of breadcrumbs. Really best quality breadcrumbs. Not the seasoned kind that you buy at the store. Homemade is better. You can buy it at the store, but just don't make them seasoned. So one and a half cups. And a tablespoon of dried Italian herbs. Thyme, oregano, you know, a little bit of basil. And I squeeze it through my fingers like this to release some of the, the um, oils from the dried herbs. And then just mix this up to combine it. All right, so we have that. That's all set to go. Now I take lemon juice, the juice of two lemons. Now this is where my mom really probably took her liberties because she is somebody who absolutely adores lemon juice. She never met a dish she didn't try to put a lot of lemon into. So I would say this is a good, oh, four tablespoons of lemon. We're making a little sauce here that's going to go over top of the breadcrumbs. I know you're still probably wondering, but where are the artichokes? Well, I have three nine ounce packages of frozen artichoke hearts. Now, these are in the supermarket. They're in the frozen section. Sometimes they're a little bit difficult to find, but not generally. All right, that's good. That's a good amount of lemon juice there. And I'm just going to take a second and pick out these pits that I, that I let get through my fingers. Only a few of them. All right, good. Okay, so I've got everything organized here. I need three quarters of a cup of olive oil. And this is gonna spread out over the whole casserole. So the oil and the lemon juice is a good combination, not too, too much. Okay. My mom figured this all out. She's got, um, you know, never a quote unquote professional cook, but she always loved food so much that she would spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to get the flavors throughout. So that by the time it all was distributed over top of the artichokes, there was plenty of flavor everywhere. So we just want to make sure these garlic chopped rather finely. Sometimes if you put a little salt in there, it'll break down the oil. Okay. That looks finely chopped enough. And this I'm gonna add to the lemon juice and olive oil and give it a little bit of a whisk to make sure that everything is slightly emulsified. Mm, smells great. Now one last thing in this mixture here, in this breadcrumb mixture, I need some salt. Not too, too much salt because there's salt with the cheese, but don't be shy with the pepper. A good, good, good grinding of pepper. All right. Okie doke. Now we can layer everything together. The oven is preheating right now to 325 degrees. All right. I'm just going to reorganize things here a little bit. Bring this over. Oh, but I'm going to get some olive oil in the bottom here first. Not too much, just a little bit of a drizzle. And then put your artichoke hearts down all in one layer and spread them out a bit. Mm. And then take the breadcrumbs and distribute them throughout and then press them down a little bit. Believe me, it's that cheesy breadcrumby mixture that gets in between each artichoke heart that is what you want to be eating when you're sitting there with your Thanksgiving turkey on your plate and you, you always picture all those sides kind of pressing up against the turkey and then they have a little bit of gravy on them, then maybe a little tart from the cranberry sauce. For me, that is really what that Thanksgiving plate is all about that mixture. So I've pressed it down kind of and gotten everything in its nooks and crevices. And then I'm going to take a second and just re-whisk this to make sure it's all completely incorporated. The garlic, the lemon juice, the olive oil. All right, that looks pretty good. And then just drizzle evenly all over the whole thing. And then it's going to bake for about 30 minutes covered at first. And then I'll take the foil off and I'll boost up that temperature in that oven a little bit to 375 degrees and it cooks for another 10 to 15. Thanks for watching. Hungry for more? 
Click here for more great recipes, and to subscribe, click here. Check back every week for more craveable recipes, leave a comment, and tell me what you think. And don't forget, head over to our other channels for Everyday Food with Sarah Carey, Martha Stewart Weddings, and the Martha Stewart Channel.